Hi folks. Uh, my name is Abi Subasylum. I head up uh, the company called Levers Labs, a products and services company in the data space. And today we're gonna be talking about the SOMA standard, uh, which is a project I started last year and uh, has uh, consumed my life, <laughs> has become a, a deep personal passion project of mine. Uh, and I'm excited to share with you all today. Uh, so uh, SOMA is, SOMA stands for uh, Standard Operating Metrics and Analytics, and that is what it is. Uh, it is an attempt to standardize operating metrics for companies, uh, the analytics uh, that those operating metrics supports, um, and uh, the upstream pipelines and telemetry that allows those metrics to exist. Uh, we have a lot to cover. So today we're going to talk about why, what, what's next. Uh, so much to talk about. Uh, look, I put hundreds of hours into this stuff. I could easily talk for the next 10 uh, straight. Uh, so uh, alas, we only have, I think about 25 left. So um, a couple of disclaimers. Uh, number one, uh, as you can see, I am gonna go fast. Uh, usually I tell people to replay my stuff at 2X speed uh, when they rewatch. Uh, this time I'm gonna recommend you slow it down instead. Uh, number two, um, I'm going to keep things very high level. Uh, Soma is ambitious. It tries to do a lot of different things. Um, my goal here is to cover enough ground uh, that everyone watching can resonate with at least a piece of what we're trying to do, um, because I, I think it will. I think there's value out um, there's value uh, for everyone watching from SOMA and there's value um, that everyone watching can contribute back to SOMA um, and SOMA could use um, your help. Uh, number three, uh, if you want to continue the conversation, uh, I, I hope you do. Uh, we can go far deeper uh, and I hope you reach out. You can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me on Twitter and you can find the repo uh, for SOMA on, uh, on GitHub. So uh, with that, with three minutes burned, uh, let's start with why, um, which I think is important uh, because SOMA is really animated. I am really animated by uh, three founding beliefs. Uh, the first is that metrics are what matters. Uh, for most companies, uh, the value of their data is not going to come from generative AI. Uh, for most companies, the value of the data is going to come predominantly um, from reporting, uh, from operationalizing reporting, uh, from things like uh, business reviews and data-driven planning, um, and occasionally things like uh, internal ML, internal data science, internal exploratory analysis. Um, and all of those things, um, all of those things rely on quality metrics, uh, expressive metrics to be meaningful. Uh, number two, uh, companies need enough of the right metrics uh, for those use cases. Underline, underline. Um, the purpose of metrics and how they work is using data to proxy reality. Uh, if you don't have the right metrics, you can't see reality, you can't proxy reality clearly. Um, if you don't have enough of the uh, enough metrics, uh, you can't do that proxying completely. You can't see reality completely. And both are important. Uh, number three, uh, companies shouldn't be innovating on metrics. Um, for the most part, uh, if you're B2B, uh, B2B SaaS is B2B SaaS is B2B SaaS. Uh, the physics of the business, the central physics of the business that metrics purport to capture and represent are largely the same. Um, at least, you know, in my experience, at least 80% of the operating metrics that companies track um, are redundant, could be redundant, should be redundant across their competitors. And that is a waste. That is effort that isn't going into uh, truly differentiated heavy lifting that builds competitive advantage. And so the what of SOMA, what we're trying to do uh, is to resolve those founding beliefs, right? We are creating uh, an open community-driven non-commercial approach for uh, getting people to metrics and getting value out of those metrics, getting people enough of the right metrics um, that they can actually um, uh, get last mile value in ways that are um, differentiable um, and build competitive advantage. And we do that by essentially doing 
three things. Uh, number one, we uh, identify, uh, document, catalog the metrics you should care about. Uh, you know, what the Financial Standards Board has done for GAAP, right, generally accepted accounting principles, uh, we want to do for uh, business operating metrics and believe we can. Uh, number two, uh, once we have those metrics, uh, we want to uh, be a little bit more ambitious and we want to work backwards uh, to uh, actually help produce those metrics. And that looks like uh, all of the upstream, you know, data processing, data pipeline, data ecosystem work, the semantic layers, the data models, the uh, telemetry that is required to actually generate those metrics. You want to work backwards and define those as well. So there's an easy path to producing those metrics. Um, and number three, uh, we also want to move forwards from the metrics. Uh, so once you have those metrics, um, how can we help uh, put the A in SOMA? Um, and how can we help standardize those analytics, those last mile uh, exposures and use cases? Uh, and all of that work is expressed in uh, this footprint, right? So basically everything after raw data, right? Modeling data, expressing data, consuming it or getting it ready for consumption um, and, uh, and then getting last mile, last mile use out of it. Um, all of this is in the footprint for SOMA, but uh, it's worth noting that uh, it is not all or nothing. Uh, if you don't want to use this entire footprint, you do not have to. Um, if you would like to use um, just the metrics or even just a few of the metrics, not all of the metrics, um, that is completely okay. Um, if you would like to ignore the metrics and go your own way, but you would like to use the telemetry standards or the semantic layer standards, uh, you know, that we're developing, you know, that's also fine. SOMA is intended to work together, this whole footprint to make it easy. Um, but, you know, any pieces of it that people want to take out um, is totally fine as well. Certainly not all or nothing. Uh, but again, this is where we start, right? Where we start with is the metrics themselves. Metrics are the absolute atomic unit of our universe. Uh, and this is, you know, frankly, a place that we think a lot of other um, attempts at data standardization have gone wrong, that they haven't been uh, metric conscious uh, and working backwards and forwards from the metrics. And so for us, what we try and do, and you can see this in the in the GitHub repo, uh, what we try and do is to anchor on those metrics and catalog the metrics that we think matter for each business model. Uh, the repo that I'll link to at the end of this talk, it, it will point you to the B2B SaaS uh, version of SOMA, which is um, standard we're furthest along with. Uh, and what you'll find there are JSON definitions of metrics that look something like this. Uh, MRR, a very non-controversial metric. Uh, you know, we have resurrection MRR, we identify that that metric matters, uh, we define, we provide a definition for the metric, uh, we uh, add metadata that we think you should care about uh, uh, in using the metric, um, things like the periods um, that these metrics should be evaluated on and calculated on, um, things like the dimensions we think you should slice by based on what we've seen in all the companies that we've worked with and deployed so much into. Um, and other metadata that you'll find in the repo, like, uh, you know, who are the business owners and uh, how should we categorize and what is the life cycle stage of this metric. And, you know, what you'll find in the B2B SaaS repo is uh, 415 of these metrics. Uh, across the entire gamut of what a B2B SaaS company does. So you'll see uh, SaaS unit economics, growth accounting metrics like this one. Um, you'll also see classic digital marketing and sales and customer success and support and finance metrics uh, interleaved as well. From here, from that list of 415 uh, for B2B SaaS, we work all the way backwards and we uh, focus on uh, what are the data modeling primitives um, that a company would need uh, to be able to have the easy pass, the quick button um, uh, to streamline uh, the journey towards getting those metrics. Uh, unlike other attempts at standardizing metrics or you know, giving people easy paths to metrics, uh, we do not start from raw data. 
uh, we uh, think that data has to be modeled. There has to be the subtraction layer. And so what SOMA um, provides is two options uh, for what those abstractions are, activities and entities. And like with everything, it's not, you know, it's not all or nothing. Uh, people can go both activities and entities or activities uh, or entities. And we'll talk a little bit now about what each of those are. So starting with activities. Uh, activities for us are uh, business events. SOMA looks at businesses as sets of events uh, and looks at those sets of events as all that's necessary to compute metrics. Uh, for uh, B2B SaaS, uh, we have looked at our list of 415 metrics. We've worked backwards and we've defined about 150 atomic business events, things that are happening in the business and uh, have provided specifications uh, for what those events are, um, and we call those activities. This is very similar to kind of the activity schema notion um, from Narrator, uh, but we are much more prescriptive about what those activities actually need to be. So we provide uh, semantics. So what should the activity be called? Customer resurrects from contract in reference to our earlier uh, resurrection MRR example. We provide uh, the metadata that is necessary to be able to do the downstream uh, metric dimensional slicing. Um, and we provide uh, triggers for when should these events be raised? Uh, uh, what do those events actually mean and represent? Uh, and this is where uh, SOMA allows for the most flexibility, for the most customizability. Uh, resurrection MRR basically just means, you know, if you go scroll back, resurrection MRR, all we say is that, you know, someone churned in a prior period uh, and someone resumed their subscription in the current period. Um, in the activity uh, is where we allow, uh, you know, we have a very Railsy philosophy. It's convention over config. We specify a convention uh, that the time period for coming back is 30 to 120 days. Uh, but this is where we allow businesses to kind of express their, their own unique idiosyncrasies um, or their own unique preferences for business logic um, while still allowing all the rest of the pieces of the ecosystem to fit uh, on top of these interfaces. So what we have constructed with activities are this set of these new kind of data contracts for telemetry. Um, and if you raise these activities with at least these semantics, um, we will be able to uh, pick up from there and uh, interlock those activities to the rest of the ecosystem. So uh, where do these activities live? Uh, activities are telemetry that is raised into what we call activity streams, which are just tables in your data warehouse. Um, they are immutable ledger tables. Um, the idea is that if your source system can stream these events directly, great, um, you know, do that. Uh, if not, uh, using the data already in your warehouse, increment these events, these activities into those activity streams so that they can be consumed. Uh, we recommend activities. We like the activity paradigm. We think uh, you know, it is uh, faster to implement, easier to reason about, leads to simpler data pipelines. Um, one of the things that we found that's very powerful is uh, we've also found that Product telemetry is event-based. Marketing telemetry is event-based. Often business um, telemetry, business data is not event-based, but turning it into event-based means that you can now consume it um, and interleave those streams. And you know, we found that some of the folks that we've implemented this with um, have gotten value out of being able to visualize their business event data along with their product data and marketing data in tools like Amplitude. And you know, that's been uh, it's pretty valuable as well. Uh, the other option for uh, modeling is what we call entities. Um, that's the other abstraction possibility. Entities are basically wide facts. They're wide facts. We provide the specification for those wide facts um, and their associated dimension tables um, that you know, we think you would need for analysis. Um, and we provide also, if you've chosen to construct entity activities, we provide scripts to translate from those activities into entities. Uh, 
on top of that modeling layer, right? Assuming that you've gotten your data into, you know, either activities or entities, um, data has to be turned into, those models have to be turned into metrics. And for us, that is what we think of as this expression layer. And here too, we provide two options. Uh, there is a semantic layer option uh, or what we call uh, what we call nets. So uh, for uh, semantic layers, uh, Soma provides uh, view definitions. So uh, these view definitions, lookML, metric flow, cube, those are the ones we're working with right now. Uh, sit on top of those entities, right? They're meant to, you know, interlock, sit right on top of those entities that we prescribed, that we specified. Um, and if you copy these definitions, these configurations, these view configurations into your, say, Looker environment, um, you will be able to consume the metrics that are defined on top of those entities. Nets uh, are, uh, on the other hand, flattened caches of metrics. It's um, a pun bad enough that I should explain it. A net is a 2D projection of a cube. Uh, and this is basically a metrics table. It is one long metrics ledger where, um, you know, we have the name of the metric, the grain, the time period, the dimensions that we're calculating the metric on, um, and ultimately the, the value, the measurement value for the metric under consideration. Uh, and you know, every you know, day uh, or you know, backfill period, uh, metrics are appended to this you know, perpetual immutable ledger, um, which can now allow for uh, quick access of a metric across you know, any grain, date, dimension, time. Nets are the recommended interface for expressing metrics. Uh, we provide scripts to go, and this is what you'll find in the repo today. Um, we'll, we provide scripts to go directly from um, activities to nets. Uh, we, uh, we think this is a much faster way to implement. Uh, we like that it's portable, uh, doesn't require you to be locked into a certain BI tool. Uh, and uh, very important for Soma, we also um, like the uh, notion that this ledger, these nets, uh, support the bi-temporality of metrics, right? Um, metrics aren't, you know, when, when I say that churn on January 2nd was 20%, um, I am saying that uh, churn is, uh, the value of churn applies to a date, and I'm saying that that um, value applies as of a date. Um, but you know, if there are late arriving facts or changes in definitions or changes in data quality, uh, my understanding of what a metric was at a given point in time will change. Um, semantic layers make that harder to express. Other tools, other paradigms make that harder to express. We find it very important to express. Um, and we think the ledger concept of our, what we call nets uh, makes that easy to manage. Finally, on top of all of this, um, Soma standardizes last mile use cases and artifacts, right? We have the metrics, we can consume those metrics out of these nets, out of semantic layers. Um, how do we actually put them to use? Um, we have, uh, we're doing this in a couple of different ways, um, actually specifying the kind of dashboards, for instance, that you know, we recommend people consume. Um, but the most, um, uh, the most important way we're doing this uh, is uh, supporting the creation of metric trees. Um, metric trees uh, for us is um, the concept that you can take an organization's metrics and you can uh, plot them all in this web of relationships. Uh, and if you are able to you know, construct this web of relationships, uh, you can use that tree, that resulting uh, web, uh, to be able to answer the core questions of analytics, the what happened questions, the root cause analysis questions by looking down the tree, the forecasting questions by looking up the tree, and the prescriptive analytics questions by looking at the edges of those trees. Uh, what we are also currently developing right now in SOMA is uh, you know, we have these 415 metrics in for B2B SaaS. 
um, we're now working on providing the edges between those metrics. So which metrics are related to uh, which other metrics? Uh, what do those relationships look like? Uh, what are the formulas? What are the weights? Um, you know, how strong are different relationships? Uh, and providing that so folks can you know, use that to build their own trees, which you know, we've found uh, to be uh, very powerful. So what is, uh, so what is next? Um, so immediately next, I'm going to take a breath and take a drink of water after this, uh, after this, uh, you know, race. Uh, but, uh, you know, in general, SOMA, um, uh, we are working on SOMA across multiple, what we call domains. So, uh, you know, we think metrics can be standardized you know, by business model. Those business models for us are basically these domains. Uh, we are currently working on B2B SaaS, B2C SaaS, e-commerce, marketplace, uh, and, uh, and logistics. And we're working on those across um, the scopes that we've talked about, right? So the metrics themselves, the, um, the schemas, the contracts for activities, the specifications for entities, the actual semantic layer files, and all the scripts that support these. Um, across all of these domains, you know, scopes and stages, you know, most of these things are in development right now. Um, although, you know, we're happy to, you know, share sneak peeks. Um, what is currently in private review and public review is um, the scopes for B2B SaaS. So, uh, you know, if you go to the repo for so much now, you will see uh, uh, the metrics as of today, you'll see um, the 415 metrics and their definitions, uh, you know, available for, you know, commentary and contribution. Um, and in private review, we are implementing SOMA right now in, you know, more companies um, uh, using the activities we've developed, the entities we've developed, and the semantic layer files we've developed. Um, we're targeting getting to, you know, we're, we're in about 30 plus companies now. We're targeting getting to about 50 to really pressure test uh, before we um, can turn everything over to, to public review. Uh, so with that said, there are basically three ways to help to engage. Um, one is to join private review. Uh, you know, if um, any of this sounds interesting, again, not all or nothing, but if any of these pieces sound interesting, uh, you know, reach out, uh, you know, would love to help uh, implement this, um, you know, see what works, see what doesn't, and use that feedback to iterate. Um, number two uh, is to join a committee. Uh, so um, we have started to pull together some committees of subject matter experts for each of these uh, domains. Um, and, you know, if any of these committees, uh, any of these domains are particularly of interest to you, uh, please reach out as well. Um, those committees are, you know, where we're kind of finally version um, the version of these standards uh, to support um, uh, productionization and, uh, you know, stages after public review. And then third, uh, you know, submit issues and PRs. Uh, you know, the content will start continuing to roll out here. Um, you know, if you have uh, edits you'd like to make to scripts themselves, uh, you know, please raise PRs. Um, and if you'd like uh, to suggest new metrics, uh, remove metrics, edit metrics, discuss them, uh, you know, please consider raising, uh, raising issues. Uh, and with that, I will leave you, um, in, you know, a couple minutes of questions if we have time, but I will leave you to, um, the GitHub repo for B2B SaaS, uh, which is at somastandard.com. Uh, you know, stay tuned, watch the repo, follow the repo, you know, help along. Uh, we expect there to be, you know, many more updates in the coming months and um, hope to uh, uh, get the rest of B2B SaaS to public review uh, by the end of next month um, and then slowly start releasing these other uh, scopes by the end of the year. All right, folks, um, with that, I'll turn it over to questions, if there are any.
Whoops. Um, sorry. Um, uh, and Siska asks, um, I would love to learn more about nets. First time hearing the concept, where can I learn more? Um, yes. Um, nets are, uh, you know, a concept unique to Soma. Uh, it's uh, a, a pun that we made up. <laughs> um, and uh, there is more context on the, uh, on the repo. Uh, but, uh, you know, like we, uh, like I noted earlier, um, what a net really is, is just a flattened OLAP cube. Um, it is a pre-cache, right? The metrics, uh, you know, let's say, I guess let's go back to resurrection, MRR, uh, somewhere here. Uh, so resurrection MRR here uh, would have an entry in the the net um, uh, table, right? It's a table, it's a ledger in the data warehouse, uh, would have an entry, would have a row uh, for every permutation of month and dimension. Um, so you can now quickly consume, uh, you know, January's resurrection MRR as of February for cohort X, um, where it's a corresponding row in the table. Any other questions? So uh, Michael Perez asks, what is your ICP for uh, private testing? Uh, you know, I would say, you know, folks should reach out, uh, you know, as long as you have, uh, you know, this is all very warehouse native, right? Um, you know, as long as you have uh, data centralized in the warehouse, um, data infrastructure at a basic level of maturity, uh, uh, you know, some kind of transformation infrastructure like DBT or, um, or something like that. Uh, you know, most of the scripts that we've you know, referenced in this conversation are backed on DBT. So, you know, ideally you're using DBT, but um, really, you know, any kind of foundational data infrastructure, data warehouse, basic data transformation, basic orchestration, um, and then, you know, in B2B SaaS. Uh, and I think the best place to start to kind of self-qualify as an ICP then is to actually look at the metric definitions, you know, see if those are you know, if those are meaningful to you, if those are relevant to you, if those are high priority for you, and then, you know, reach out. 